Hello everyone, in this video we're going through the startup procedure, the pumping and the distillation of the latest update of the Alter Rig. So hopefully it'll answer some questions, maybe you learn something, and if not hopefully you still enjoy the video. So let's get going. Here we are with a fresh spawn of the latest version of the Alter Rig. If we run down here to the wellhead, we see that it's saying zero. And if we make our way into the chamber of uh, control, the control station or control center right here, we can get going. So you see here the wellhead and drill is zero. Now the way this works is you want to start on the left side and move right. So this station is for this orange um, arm. We call it the positioning system. It positions the rods that are on that rod wall on top of the wellhead, which is here. The second station controls the joiner, which is that orange thing right here. And then the last station controls the uh, swivel and pump jack, as well as the pumping and the rotary table drilling. So first to get started, we got to move this swivel up to clear the uh, rod wall. Otherwise the rod will hit it and it'll collide and cause some problems. So once that's up past the orange part there, you could stop it. Now you hop into this chair, turn on this device and position the rod wall against the arm. You could turn on the clamp and push the wall and it'll, cl it'll click. And then you could move the rod wall back. That's important, otherwise it'll clash. And then you press this on the wellhead position. Now this whole system moves right on top of the wellhead. And then you can move the rod down. Now if it's not moving like what we just saw, it's because it's a glitch of the game. You just have to kind of jiggle it a little bit and then it starts to move. So we're going down. You're going to hear a clamp when it hits the wellhead that we saw under the platform. There we go. So it's clamped. Now this is super important. You have to unclamp this in order to bring it back to the rod wall position. Otherwise, it's gonna try to drag that rod out and cause a, like a system. Like it'll just kind of try to yank it out. Now we can do the same steps. So we position ourselves. You turn on the clamp and bring this in. Now it's clamped, we bring this back. Now you have to move the uh, track up to clear that. So the bottom of that has to clear it. So we're good now. And you bring it into position. There we go. Now move it down just a little bit. So it's uh, right there. And then we move our chair over. Now dr bring this thing up. And once it's inside that um, joiner part, turn this on. You see that this is aligned to be joined and you join them. So now we're, we've heard that click. Now you wanna release this and bring this back here. So it's out of the way. You can move this down the reason you move it down is then, so the swivel, which we're going to activate now, and you see it coming in, there. Now you want to keep the downward pressure on, so leave this on, I have to rename that for some reason, and activate these ones, these clamps, you could even unclamp this, it doesn't really matter now. Turn on your slurry pump, turn on your water pump, you don't need to turn on your pump jack now, you turn that on when you're about 70 meters down. In, so when you penetrate the uh, well, like the oil reservoir, it'll start to pump. So now you ramp up your rotary table and it'll start to drill. And you can hear it drilling and you can see these numbers slowly increasing. You see that it's using up the water level, which is important because if the water gets too low, you have to refill it. You have to bring a tanker truck with water and refill this. But there's probably enough that you don't have to refill it all the time. So that's pretty much it. You just let it go. When this comes down, the swivel will come down. My advice is, you see where this level is here, is you stop the um, swivel and stop the rotary table, everything, once we're down to about this level. The reason is then you can easily bring another rod in and clamp it here with your joiner without having to move it all the way up. But that's uh, very similar to the step as I showed you. So pretty much you just let this go now until you get to the wellhead. 
And like I said, once you're at maybe 70 meters or 80, you turn this on, and what that does is that'll start to move that pump jack up and down. And it'll make a buzzer sound, and this light will turn green once you've hit the uh, oil reservoir. I mean, technically you could leave it on the whole time. It doesn't really, doesn't really hurt. Now, I'm going to fast forward to when we've struck our well reservoir, or oil reservoir. Here we are at a depth of 111 meters, and I've stopped all the process, so the rod is there, but I even disconnected it. And what we want to do is, really, you only need to activate the swivel clamp at this point, and bring it down. So, it's now at the oil reserve, and it's ready to be pumping. So once we hit this button, you see the extraction pressure change, and it's now pumping. So that's when you've, when you've reached the wellhead. The rest of the systems you don't really need anymore, at least not in this room. So that was the key to get to the actual oil reserve, or oil reservoir down under the ground. So we're pumping if we could now walk into this room. Now in this room, we have a chair set up for the process of the uh, pumping. So we see here we're pumping all this stuff in. We're pumping in crude oil, my bad. And then we'll get to the left side in a bit. So really you have three chambers or two reservoirs that are located on the right side here. So this is reservoir two, which houses the jet and diesel fuel. Currently we have none of them. But if we go to the back, this is reservoir one and we have a level pumping in. So we have, you know, 1200 uh, of the crude oil, 1200 meters cubed or whatever the unit is, I guess. Anyways, that's pumping. That's this display here. This one here is when we start to distill and same with this. So that's the process we're gonna atta attack now. On this left side is our storage reservoir. So we have a reservoir three and reservoir four located on the other side. So from the control center, they're located right here. That's three, and then on the back is four. These ones, you can select one of the types to bring into the reservoir, and then you pump it in. So that's what you put here, but that's only after you've done the distillation. So we really need to be focusing on this one here. Now there's three keys. He here, there's one called Fill Distillation Chamber. Step two is the Enable Distillation Process. So you want to wait until the chamber is full. And then this is optional. So let's turn the optional one on. That heats the freshly pumped oil up. So that's a heater that we have right there, or furnace. It's pumping in the fresh, uh, like, oil. Now we turn on Fill Distillation Chamber. So now our pump's active and we see that this number starts to increase. I believe there's 6,000 liters in there. It's liters, sorry, not meters cubed. Liters is in there. And now we're draining this pretty fast that we're pumping in, and we're putting it directly into this chamber. Now, you can jump the gun. It says here, wait until the chamber is full, but I've had it work even if you start it now. And I've put kind of a blocker that'll uh, let you keep pumping in and it will stop the pumping process if the uh, oil temperature starts to drop. So this will light up when it's full and we can wait that. Let's let's wait it, let's do the proper procedure. But I, I was able to turn this on early and start the process, but we're gonna wait. I actually ended up reducing the size of the chamber. So 90% full, is four and a half thousand liters. So now it's uh, full. This not this isn't turning on because I didn't set it to that number, but I will after. So this chamber is now full. So now we can turn on this distillation process. And we start to increase the temperature. So that's good. And slowly we're gonna hit the uh, 300 mark so I'll stay tuned for that 
what's interesting is this is now wide open. I have to figure out what's going on here. But regardless, you leave it now and let it process. So we have the oil level and we have this oil level here. This is a secret little meter that I have. So we're at 4,600, so that's our 90% mark. Okay, perfect, we're at 4,600, this is off. So we're, we're now full in our chamber and it is increasing the temperature. So we're almost at that 300. Now once we reach the 300, the jet fuel and diesel fuel is gonna start to trickle in. So we're almost there, this light's gonna light up once we reach that number. And this pressure just stays. I mean, this is the main line. So we're just monitoring that we're in fact pumping things in. There we go. We've reached the temperature. This will start to trickle in in a bit. But regardless, this keeps pumping in our main reservoir. This is stationary uh, based on whatever is inside that fluid or inside that chamber. Now, if you run out here again and take a look, now that we've reached 300, this is actually... Oh, sorry, the distillation chamber is here. It's reading that there is some diesel and some jet fuel in here. So it's starting to separate and slowly it'll start to distill into the different chambers. So if we come back up here, meaning the different oil reservoirs, so for the diesel and jet. So there we are. We're already getting some jet and the diesel is going to follow. There we go. So now diesel's coming in. This is still increasing. This one is still very hot, so it's th still over 300. Now this is not pumping in any fluid because we're still over that 90% um, mark. This should turn on once we dip down lower than 90% of this uh, chamber. But as you can see, we're uh, starting up and it starts slow because we're just starting to separate the process, but see, this one's already kind of going off, and slowly this one's just gonna take off as well. There we go. Now, as this starts to drain, the pump should kick on once we reach a level lower than the uh, 90%. And once that happens, I'll show you guys the next step, but this is, this is going, this is going, this is still hot enough, so we're happy with that. Now that's dipped a little lower, so it should turn on and get fill our distillation chamber up as well. There we go, so it just kind of jumps on and off to make sure this thing's topped up as we distill that. So that's working. Now, say you want to put some something inside Reservoir 3. Say you want to put the diesel. You put the diesel on, and then once you turn this on, it starts to pump it into the Reservoir 3. And say this one, we want to put our jet fuel in. So then, we wait a second, there we go. So now we're pumping that in there. I have to fix that one, I'm not sure why that's zero. Probably not connected to anything. Now this one reads diesel, and it's at almost 100. And this one will read jet fuel, and it's more than 100. So that was that's the distillation process, it's going. Now things may heat up and start on fire. I've tried to minimize it, but let me know if that does in fact happen. Now the last step that I'm going to show, or the last two steps, is up here. You see your uh, the diesel furnace right here. And we've put these this uh, little dial. This should automatically fill up with diesel from your reservoir if um, it gets too low. But if you don't have any, maybe you pumped it all out to take it in a truck, you can use this anchor to fill it up with, uh, with diesel as well. And then the last thing is the actual pumping process. So we're going to get into our tanker truck here. And drive it over to the diesel chamber. Let's fill it with diesel. Do a little Tokyo drifting. There we go. And then you want to take your hose and we're going to put it on the in and then just run over if it lets us get that far. There we go. And this is the diesel, so we'll plug it in here. We turn this button on 
and we turn the button on here and, and then we also want to level it between the compartments there we go so we're filling up and it's automatically leveling there's three compartments inside this tanker and it's leveling out between them so the weight's evenly distributed so there we have it and let's check on our systems here so this is just slowly adding in as needed but this is keeping a hot temperature which is good and this is still pumping up because we keep we're keeping the pump jack activated and these are running dry because they're all inside this these reservoirs and in fact the diesel is even getting taken out if it reaches zero which it's not letting us because we keep distilling things but if it reaches zero this should automatically turn off as well and that meaning this it'll no longer have diesel in reservoir three and then we can reset this button well there we go we've stopped the process so the truck sucked it dry and now it's zero so now we could put something else in like the crude we just have to make sure the truck is disconnected otherwise we're going to start pumping in whatever is in there into the truck so if we put crude here it would start pu pushing crude into the truck but we don't want that anyway that was a brief little summary video of this uh alter rig hopefully you learned something maybe it answered some questions and uh I hope you guys all enjoy it. So thank you for watching and happy stormworksing.